this one's going to be quite fun actually because I've got some driving stuff at the end of it to like show you a day with David and I. Um, I'm in a taxi so it's a bit bumpy at the moment. What I'm doing today, I've come into like the Harrods area because do you remember I sold my bag to Luxury Promise? You know what? You know I gave it to them to get a valuation. Well, they contacted me because they've now, I left it with them. They have to do all the authentication. Then they, I need to go in today, because um, they basically, you can either get a credit or swap it for something, or you can take the money. And I'm gonna go in there today and see, because they said that there's a really sweet vintage medium flap bag that's come in and then I might have a look at it and see you know I've got so into the vintage stuff I just think it's better priced and it's better made and quite like that it's all of it's got a story to tell so I'm gonna go and do that then I'm gonna go into Harrods and see Enrique in Dior and then the final thing I need to do is go to Chanel on Sloan Street to pick up this pair of trousers that they've had for ages actually I keep meaning to go and pick them up I bought them and they needed altering uh, that was my bag I should probably pick that up it's gone everywhere I bought them they needed altering and today I'm gonna go and pick them up so we're going to head to um, luxury promise first I'm back in with my crazy coat crazy coat on uh, and I'm just waiting to have a look at this medium flap but before I, well, while I'm waiting, shall I show you some, because there's some new stuff on the shelves now. <laughs> there's this. This also looks new from when I came in last time. Oh, this is nice. This looks like one of those 1994 pieces. And this caught my eye too. Look, look, look. Quite cute, quite cute. Thank you. Uh, can I film? Go All right. <laughs> so these are the three medium size flaps. And do you know what the difference is? Is there a difference in year, perhaps? Yeah, I can tell you. So the way that you indicate the year is the inside cereal sticker. Okay. Which you can find just here. Yep. Now, to me, this one is definitely an older style vintage. Mm -hmm. It's a one series. Okay. So, serial stickers started with zero in 1986. Wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and then they worked their way up. So, this will be around a 1988 piece. Okay, okay. And then the next one. So this one's slightly more warm, but again, it's a one series. Okay, one series. Yeah, so um, late 80s, early 90s. Okay. And the last one. You can also find this number actually on the card. So again, okay. this is nice and clear. You can see that yeah. it's a one series. So mm -hmm. again. A, and it's unusual 80s. that you'd still have that with a bag that old, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. We try our best to find the pieces with the cards. Yeah. Um, because obviously then you have a clear understanding of the cereal and mm -hmm. the age as well and it also holds its value okay okay so the first uh the first bag is three thousand five hundred three thousand one hundred one hundred and then three thousand six hundred okay so for anyone wondering if you're looking uh to buy one of these bags that's kind of roughly how much you're looking at unless you go for a newer one yeah, I think. you're looking at between 2,800 to 3,800, okay. subject to condition and inclusion. Yeah. So, for example, the 3,600 pound one, it has its card, so it'll be priced at the highest. Yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's good for any of you that have got a budget of around 2,600 plus. These bags are quite accessible. So, out of all three, I'm interested in this one and this one. And this one, the good thing about this, it's puffier on here. Uh, and on here, although it's more shiny, it's it's flatter on the quilting. It's lost some of its puffiness, which you would expect for a bag this old. Let's have a look at this one in the mirror. Yeah, she did. She was like, we need to move things. We need to get What do you think? What do you think of this? So this is the first one. The meat, the number two bag, number two of what was on the table. Oh, you know. 
Then this is number three. So this is the more expensive of the three. Um, just because I think it's in slightly better condition. Just like a little bit. Sorry for side camera. There we go. Try and straighten it up a bit. No, So here is bag number two, so the one that was in the middle of these two. Just have a look on the inside. It's in really good condition. And this one doesn't come with its card, does it? Oh, thank you. I'm trying to do it with one hand. Okay. So this one thank you. doesn't come with its card. Okay. It come with a Luxury Promise Authenticity card. So okay. that guarantees that we've tested it, um, it authenticated it mm -hmm. three times. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and the serial number's still on there, on the yeah, inside. The I saw that. Still inside, yeah. Okay. As long as that's intact when you're buying vintage, the serial number inside is the most yeah. important thing, I would say. Yeah, massively. But obviously, if you are on a budget, then the items that have been authenticated without the serial mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. sell for less. So yeah. that's a good, a good idea if you're spending kind of under the £3,000 mark yeah. without the serial. That's a really good point, actually. Yeah. For anyone watching, if you do have a smaller budget, you can... When you buy from here, they authenticate everything three times. Um, so even if the label's worn off slightly or is missing, you know that you've got the real thing. Um, and this one, this one does come with its card. Um, let me just check this one out as well. Oh, it's difficult. I quite like the texture and the feeling of this one, but then the fact this comes with its card after all these years is appealing. There's, it's there. Um, I know it's the same bag, but it's actually quite a difficult decision. I think, you know, I think as well, possibly that hardware slightly, like I'm being really picky here. I might, I might get that one. What do you think? Well, it has the card. Yes. So I think it would be a good choice. It's got everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, on camera, it looks sort of like darker. Yeah, I think I'm going to get that okay. one. <laughs> Thank you. It's made it to Dior. My gosh, you guys, I left Luxury Promise. And because of um, Winter Wonderland at Hyde Park, it took me an hour to get here. An hour. And it's like a couple of miles. Show you some of the collection. Some of this you may have seen actually. There's a new collection next door that I'll show you in one second. everyone today I'm with David oh have you got your mask okay cool I'm with David and we are at let me show you the Porsche Experience Center which I've shown you before actually but we're here for a drive day and the way this works I'm just gonna get my mask and my driving license the way this works is that when you buy a car you get I'm gonna lock the car when you buy a car you get a free experience day where you get to drive your car around a track and they teach you what to do if your car gets into a spin on water stuff like that um and so that's what we're going to do and even if you don't have a, a porsche it actually doesn't matter because you can buy this experience um, and you also get like a three course meal it's a really nice very civilized day so I'm gonna 
film what I can um, and hopefully you enjoy. We're inside and there's two levels in here. You've got the upstairs, which is the restaurant and the restaurant overlooks the track. And then you've got this downstairs area that you enter when you check in. And in here we've got some really cool cars, which I'll show you now and show you kind of what it looks like. So you walk in through those doors over there and then you walk into this space here. So up there you've got the restaurant. And then um, I'll show you some of the cars. And you can also buy, like the jacket I'm wearing, um, this is from Porsche, and you can also buy this while you're here. Some of the clothes. I can't actually see it. The, the best selection, you know, is if you go online, um, you can get the best stuff. You've also got these accessories. Like I have one of these in pink that I got from in here. So all of this is free within the price. You get three courses of which you pick which you want from each course. And the great thing is about this, you can go out driving and then once you, whenever you want to, you can come back in and have an afternoon tea. So it's a really good day out for couples uh, or as a, even a birthday present. I'll tell you how much it is when I um, get out. I think it was around, so I got it for free. Yeah, I got it for free because I have a new car, but I paid for David and it was like 400 pounds. So that's around about how much it is. Let's 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 decide what we're gonna have. So you're gonna have, for starter. No, I don't. I'm a little bit screwed on that. Which one? Um, the starter, I don't know what to have. Okay. And then you're going to have... I have to go for the pork. You're going to have the pork cheek. Um, I might have the sea bass. Do you know what you're having for dessert? Yeah, top one. Autumn fruits. Oh, it's probably quite a good, good option, actually. I might have the um, parsnips, I think. Here's my starter arrived. Do you see what I mean? The food here is really decent. I ordered the parsnips. David actually didn't want a starter. He's just going to go for main course and dessert. But yeah, there is my um, my starter. I'll let you know if it tastes good. It's not a vlog if you don't film your food. Okay, so this is David's. And then this is mine. Okay, now for dessert. And David has gone for autumn mess. It's basically like a meringue with cream and... What I'm else? having mine with bread. And he's going to finish off the bread as well. <laughs> so he's having autumn mess. And then I've got the chocolate, uh, something chocolate with vanilla and cherry inside of it. I think that's the vanilla thing on the side because I can see the vanilla pieces in there. What's it like? It's actually really good. Is it really good? I can't eat it all. You can't eat it all? Well, you. See, no, it's really rich. I went for a, a, see I think that's good, even though that's tiny, I think that's going to be really rich. Sorry everyone, but I need to go, because I need to eat this. Yeah. Mm. That's good. And it's rich as just come back in from the first round of driving and it was incredible. David sat in front of me at the moment and so far we've both done launch control which is where you go from 0 to 60 in some godly amount of time um, and it makes your stomach go and feel a bit, <laughs> feel a bit tired. Anyway, um, what we're going to do is we've come back in because there's a break where you have afternoon tea. Um, just like a mini afternoon tea that I'll show you in one second and then we're going to have a debriefing and then we're going to go back out again and one thing that I really want to do that I love doing is donuts 
So there's um there's like a patch of uh there's like an area here where it's got smooth tarmac and you can do donuts and that's what we're gonna do after. I can't film any of this for you, but I will hopefully try and convey it by explaining. We've just come in from our final session around the track. So all in all, we've probably done a couple of hours and we both feel really tired actually. And now the worst thing is, the journey to get home is ages, hour and a half. And it's all motorway. And after a while, it starts getting really tiring because it's just like one straight long road. I'm gonna try and get David to drive. I drove here and it's like oh so tiring we're gonna go and get a final drink before we go uh, and anything else to say yeah. I might quickly show you my jacket just because what do you think it's a nice jacket quilted quilted jacket yeah, yeah it's nice I bought it I wasn't given it just to say Hi everyone, I thought I'd come on here before I end the video and have a really quick catch up with you because I, I don't think I filmed an ending to this and I know rightly so a lot of you say to me I hate it when you just cut the video short. I don't do that on purpose, most of the time I've forgotten to film an ending. So anyway, um, I said in, in the early part of this vlog that I was going to go to Chanel and Dior and I wanted to explain to you why the Dior segment was really rushed and why there was no Chanel segment at all. I went into London that day and I went to, so I had a meeting in the morning and then I thought I'm going to take the afternoon off. Now when you're self-employed people think you get up at 10, you do what you want, you've got all this free time, you do not. I mean. Being self-employed, I've got less time than I've ever had in my life. Like weekends, you don't really get weekends, you end up working. Um, so what I do is I try and, if I'm going for meetings and I can, I try and make sure that I take a few hours off to go to the gym or I um, take an afternoon off if I can and I work it around work. Otherwise you end up with zero time off and it's really unhealthy to do that. So anyway, that particular day, had meetings in the morning, thought I've got a couple of hours, I'm gonna use them to do something for me. So I went to Luxury Promise. I may or may not tell you if I bought anything there that day, I actually would show you it, only I don't know what I've done with it in the house, so I have to do that another time. But when I finished at Luxury Promise, I needed to get back from basically Oxford Street to Harrods. For any of you who are au fait with London, you will know that that is the shortest journey. If it was a sunny, not raining day, I probably would have walked it through Hyde Park, but it was dark, it was in the evening, I felt it was unsafe. So anyway, I ended up phoning David 40 minutes in because I didn't know what I was gonna do. And he said, shall I come and get you? Now, I nearly said yes, but here's why I didn't. There was, at the moment, we've got Winter Wonderland going on in Hyde Park, and if any of you are not sure what that is, it's basically a really big Christmas market with like fairground rides. And the traffic that that's created all the way around Hyde Park Corner, all through Knightsbridge, all through the West End, it's immense, like proper gridlock, like I've never seen it before. That's why there was no taxis. And I found one, when I told him I wanted to go to Harrods, he said I'm definitely not going that way because it will take me ages. So by the time I got to Dior, I had half an hour. In Chanel, they were closing, so I couldn't really film anything. But to be honest, here are some clips from the last Chanel vlog I did not many weeks ago. I'm going to link to this video below because if you want to see what is new in Chanel, that video is still the best one to look at. There was nothing there yesterday that they didn't have when I filmed that video. So I would recommend that you go and watch that. Anyway, um, I think that's everything. Thank you all for watching. Anything that I've worn in this video, I will have linked to below if I can find it. So uh, keep an eye out there and I'll see you in the next video.